Good morning, everyone. It's really a great pleasure to be here on behalf of the German Marshall Fund. Um, I bear greetings from our president, Karen Donfried, who unfortunately could not be here with us today uh, because she, uh, as all of us at GMF, uh, give great importance to uh, this venture that is in its fourth uh, iteration. And we are really honored to be partnering with Aspen Romania and Mircea Joana and the Romanian government because in all that we do at the German Marshall Fund of the United States is to seek these partnerships between government and civil society, between official institutions, think tanks, and civil society. And we see the Bucharest Forum as truly uh, an exemplary uh, way in which we go about this. Uh, it's wonderful to see the presence of many uh, ambassadors here, of the representatives of uh, the uh, independent uh, institutions, and of course uh, of uh, friends from other countries. Um, I will try and be short because I think very much has been said already. Uh, the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, El Resco, really gave, a, I would say, a fundamental statement uh, that we share in, in every regard uh, with respect to the universal values. Uh, the fact that we have had a liberal international democratic order uh, since the Second World War, and that order has been uh, contested uh, over the recent uh, years. Um, our friend, uh, former Swedish foreign minister, uh, Carl Bildt, uh, in a recent speech uh, said that uh, it is difficult not to reach a conclusion that the ring of friends that Europe had has turned into a ring of fire. And I think that somehow summarizes uh, what we are seeing and the title, uh, Are We Facing a, a Perfect Storm?, which I think is indicative. Um, some of you know uh, who follow the European Union, and it has been mentioned uh, already, is preparing a global strategy uh, for uh, the years to come. And we have all been reminded that the former strategy that was formulated when Javier Solana was the high representative in 2003 began with that by now famous sentence, Europe has never been so secure and peaceful. That was only 12 years ago. And so we are reminded that we are to expect the unexpected. And if you allow me a, a personal reflection, uh, some of you know that I come from Belgrade, Serbia. Uh, it used to be Yugoslavia. And uh, as a social and political scientist, I had the worst of existential experiences to see my country disappear in front of me. And it has become seven countries uh, today a stable European country, a uh, reliable partner during the Cold War, um, in front of the Iron Curtain, and uh, a leader of what was then called the Non-Aligned Movement, simply disappeared uh, in smoke and violence and war. And so, unfortunately, I have learned the hard lesson of history that evil can come back, that violence can come back, and that we need to engage in a variety of activities, and I would say that the European Union is and has been until now an exemplary way in which the realization that the avoidance of war and violence is possible if we all come together uh, in difficult compromises, build institutions and buffers that can possibly avoid the extremes of suffering. Uh, the European Union uh, and Europe uh, is being challenged on a number of fronts. They have been mentioned. Let me just remind us again. Uh, Ukraine, the internal monetary uh, European uh, Eurozone crisis, and of course now the uh, challenge with the wave of refugees who are also fleeing war and violence. And as many have said, if we were individually to find ourselves in the same situation, we would do the same thing, flee the zones of conflict and seek refuge where we believe that life is better. And the West writ large, whether it's North America or uh, over uh, towards the East in Australia, New Zealand, etc., and principally the European Union, are still the coveted places where people wish to live. They are not going elsewhere. They are not going eastwards. They're going north and they're going westwards. And thus, there is a power of attraction of this model, however challenged 
it may be, and that is why it's important that we, uh, that we focus our efforts on trying to salvage this. I personally believe, and uh, to Andrea's uh, plea that we not be pessimistic, uh, after having seen the disappearance of my country, uh, I am very cautiously optimistic that Europe will muddle through. It will take a lot of effort. It doesn't happen by itself. It requires that we all come together and see to it that we reach those compromises that are necessary to uh, shore up uh, what is now a, a very uh, challenging situation in which countries have different views on the issue of refugees or on the issue of Ukraine and Russia or on the issue of the Eurozone crisis. We see that it required political leadership by France at a difficult moment in July when Greece was teetering on the brink of exiting the Eurozone. Uh, France came in, joined by Germany then, and Greece has been kept in. Nothing easy about it, of course. And let me say that there has been so much criticism over all of these years that the countries called Romania and Bulgaria were taken into the European Union much too early in 2007, that they weren't ready, that their institutions, that their judiciaries were not ready. And thus the rules now for countries like my own who are joining are much more rigorous. I applaud that with other citizens of my country because we do want a judiciary that is independent and that we citizens can rely on. But let me pose the question or the hypothetical. Just imagine had Romania and Bulgaria not been members of NATO and the European Union last year and the year before that as Russia began its aggressive politics in Ukraine. Just imagine the security situation in this eastern flank of the continent. What I mean to say by that is that there are moments when political decisions need to be made to push forward an agenda even though a country is not ready. And we see that Romania has been catching up on its judiciary. And no need to explain, those of you who are in this room, follow the situation. And I'm sure that Bulgaria will catch up also. And yes, it's been difficult because of a variety of issues. And yes, Cyprus was taken in with an unresolved territorial issue. And we in Serbia full well know that we will not be taken in to the European Union until our territorial issue is unresolved. And so lessons are learned. Every experience is important to push an agenda forward. And that is why it is important that we meet and discuss uh, these issues. Now, the Eurasian corridor, which is one of the principal themes here, is very important. And of course, this Balkan Peninsula, of which we are a part, and Romania, which is a neighbor to my country. And I cannot not mention once again everything that you all know, how with great suspense we followed the events in Romania in 1989, and that the then Yugoslav television and radio were transmitting from Temeshwara everything that was happening in this country. And again, in the spirit of solidarity that the minister and others have talked about, we need to remember that that is one of the important democratic modern principles on which those universal values are based. Finally, uh, and not belaboring all of this, I think I would like to underscore energy as a key issue that we are reflecting upon. Uh, that is the main uh, relationship that many of our countries have with Russia. Our dependency, sometimes 100% in many countries, or full dependency on gas and oil, is of course a limiting one. And the need to diversify, to see to it that the European Union really builds on this uh, idea of an energy union, to see to it that in practical ways we interconnect between each other and to diversify our sources of uh, energy supply is extremely important. I think, and it has been said, that I would put it somewhere as the highest priorities as we seek 
that peace and stability or the enforcement of stability along with the need to internally in our countries work on the consolidation of our democratic institutions. And that is why civil society has such an important role and unfortunately in some countries we see that it has been curtailed. Some countries are building walls uh, or barbed wire fences in a time when Europe has been moving away from walls and uh, building uh, the Schengen Agreement where the free movement of people is such an important legacy that we hope will be preserved. And so I hope that the two days of discussions that we have here can lead us uh, to some uh, ideas of solutions, if not solutions, and that we follow up uh, as we leave uh, Bucharest uh, tomorrow afternoon. Thank you very much, and it's a great pleasure to be with you.